Welcome to the weekly market recap with SC Securities. Let's have a look at some of the latest developments of the Sri Lankan economy and financial markets. State Minister of Finance Dr. Ranjit Simbalapitiya announced that 14 previously overlooked sectors will now be required to pay taxes. The Inland Revenue Department is conducting strict investigations into the income of this sector, which include private schools, private tutoring classes, large-scale private medical service providers, engineering services, lawyer services and surveyor services. Due to increased tax collections, government revenue has increased from 8.3% to over 11% of GDP, allowing for a surplus in the primary account, though some businesses still need to correct income under valuation. State Minister of Finance Ranjit Simbala Pitiya announced that a decision on lifting vehicle import restrictions will be made in the second week of August. The committee overseeing the matter plans to submit their final report to the cabinet by then, prioritizing vehicle imports based on national revenue and public needs, starting with public transport vehicles, goods transport vehicles, alternative vehicles, public vehicles, and then the private vehicle. Additionally, the cabinet approved the import of 1,000 vehicles for the tourism sector, including 250 buses and 700. 50 vans pending Ministry of Tourism approval. Two international casino operators from Macau and India have received approval to begin operations in Sri Lanka, facilitated by the Board of Investment pending the issuance of gambling licenses under new regulations. These operators are set to start operations and may seek BOI status if they meet the necessary investment threshold. The bill to facilitate establishment of the Casinos and Gambling Regulating Authority, which aims to resolve regulatory challenges, is nearing finalization, according to Ministry of Finance Secretary Mahinda Siriwaddhana. They expect to present the bill to Parliament soon. The United States to US aid is actively supporting Sri Lanka's efforts to enhance export capabilities and improve business efficiency. US aid mission director Gabriel Grahu reaffirmed this commitment, highlighting initiatives such as the Trade National Single Window System aimed at transparency and predictability in trade operations. Collaborating with the Sri Lanka's Ministry of Finance, US aid's assistant focuses on modernizing trade facilitation infrastructure to streamline process and reduce costs. This support is part of Sri Lanka's broader economic recovery strategy, crucial for enhancing trade competitiveness and achieving sustained economic stability. Amana Bank has received shareholder approval to consolidate its shares at a 10 to 1 ratio, as announced to the Colombo Stock Exchange. Following the consolidation, the bank's ordinary voting shares will be a total of 551,125,746, million, down from 5,511,257,461 million, million, shares. Haley Solar has been selected for Sri Lanka's first agri volatiles projects developed and financed by the Asian Development Bank. This innovative project uses semi transparent solar solar panels install about tea plantations in Hantana Kandy to generate clean energy while allowing sunlight to reach the crops. The 85 kilowatt peak hybrid solar panel project, operational since February 29, 2024, powers 90 households and features a 24 kilowatt hour battery storage system. Additionally, it includes an LDD system for optimal tea plant growth and a groundwater pump to support the estate community. These semi-transparent panels also reduce heat stress on plants, improves water efficiency and enhances crop yields. This is a significant step towards addressing Sri Lanka's energy and agricultural challenges via sustainable solutions. Selam Bank's 10 billion rupee listed debenture issue consisting initially of 50 million Basel III compliant, listed, rated, unsecured, subordinate, redeemable debentures at 100 rupees each was oversubscribed on its opening day. With an option to issue an additional 50 million debentures, Selam Bank received application for over 100 million debentures. The debentures were rated triple B by the Fitch Ratings Lanka Limited. India's Bharat Petroleum and Vitol Asia are among eight firms shortlisted for the RFP stage in the sale of Litro Gas Lanka Limited and Litro Terminal Limited. The selection overseen by the SOE Restructuring Unit follows evaluation based on guidelines approved by Sri Lanka's cabinet. The process managed by the Minister of Finance attracted interest from 14 parties, including international and local entities.
Standard Chartered Bank Global Research emphasizes that the ongoing reforms are crucial to sustainable economic momentum. The report states that achieving an average nominal GDP of over 100 billion US dollars in 2025-2027 and 11.1% cumulative real growth are highly correlated. The report adjusts probabilities assigning an 8.75 chance to the upside one scenario. The scenario where the nominal GDP is target is met but the real GDP growth falls below 11.1% is assigned a probability of 1.25%. The report also expects modest and gradual LKR depreciation versus the USD by the end 2027. The GDP estimates range from US dollars 89.91 billion in 2024 and nominal GDP is expected to surpass 96 billion US dollars by end 2027. With the recent Treasury bill auction, the 91-day T-bill rate stands at 9.91%, showing a decline of 16 basis points. The 182-day T-bill rate stands at 10.1%, showing a decline of 9 basis points. And the 1-year T-bill rate stands at 10.21%, showing a decline of 10 basis points. Let's take a look at this week's Columbus Stock Exchange market status. LMF showing an upward trend since the start of the year shows with a recent all-time high of 34.5 rupees, followed up with a trend reversal until 9 July, where it currently has shown a small bullish trend reversal since. Closing at 28.70 rupees, today it ranges between the 0% and 23.6% FIB levels, where if it breaks the 23.6% FIB level, we can call it a bullish trend. If not, it will sustain in that level or show a reversal at the first support level of 28.4 rupees and then break the 0% trend base FIB level at 27.6 rupees. Further, historically, looking at the trends, we can see support levels at 26.3 rupees and 24.9 rupees, which any reversal can be observed. We can see that the MACD line is at the verge of crossing with the signal line and the stochastic RSI shows a movement towards the oversold as well, which both shows a positive sentiment on LMF. Thank you for watching and we'll be back next week.